In 2009, a tragic accident occurred at a chocolate factory in Camden County, New Jersey. 29-year-old Vincent Smith was dumping raw chocolate into a vat of melting chocolate when he slipped and fell in from a nine-foot-high platform. He suffered a fatal blow to the head from the vat's agitator, a paddle-like mechanism used for stirring the chocolate. On the platform were three other workers, and although his co-worker immediately sprang into action to shut off the machine, they were unable to rescue Smith in time. Smith remained trapped in the vat for approximately 10 minutes until emergency services arrived on the scene. But, tragically, by then it was too late. The chocolate in the vat, intended for Hershey bars, was heated to a temperature of 55 degrees Celsius. For context, 55 is the highest setting on a home geyser. The incident took place at a New Jersey chocolate processing plant owned by Cocoa Services, Inc. The facility was managed and operated by Lions and Sons. The vat, which was eight feet deep, 14 feet long and six feet wide, was churning a batch of chocolate for Hershey's when the accident occurred. Smith was not a permanent employee at the factory. He had moved back to the city more than a month prior to find work. He was a temporary worker who had been with the company for only a few weeks. In another incident, on the 13th of February, 2023, US workplace safety regulators fined a Pennsylvania factory after two workers fell into a vat of chocolate and had to be rescued. The Mars Wrigley factory in the city of Elizabethtown was fined more than $14,500 by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. The workers were contractors and did not work full time for the factory. The incident happened in June, 2022. A hole had to be cut into the bottom of the partly full tank to get them out. More than two dozen rescuers responded and one worker was transported to hospital by helicopter, according to local reports. The regulator's report labelled the incident serious and said that the workers were hired to clean tanks but were not provided with proper safety training. It was also noted that the workers fell into a batching tank, a tank used to mix ingredients for Dove Chocolate, a brand sold in the US. Mars and Wrigley, both American companies, merged in 2008. In addition to Dove, the company also produces several popular candies such as M&Ms, Snickers and Twix. The third chocolate story might make you feel a bit queasy if you're eating chocolate right now. In 2015, the BBC did an investigation on migrants and the various methods they used to sneak into the UK. One Syrian refugee interview told his story to BBC reporters. It was his 18th attempt to stow away in a lorry bound for the UK. He recounted how he ended up in a tank of melted chocolate, an experience that almost killed him. He said they met the smuggler at a petrol garage at 2am. Trucks going to the UK were always parked there near the train station. At night, when the drivers were asleep, they would try to sneak into the trucks headed for the UK. That night, there were 25 of them, so they split into groups. Each group was going to sneak on to a different lorry. The smuggler chose seven of the tallest people, he said, five Syrians and two Egyptian guys. He was the youngest guy there, he continued. The others were all in their mid thirties. The smuggler knew which lorries were going to the UK because the smuggler had seen a card that gets posted on the lorries when they come into the waiting area. The smuggler is a Kurdish guy from Iraq and has been smuggling people for years. The smuggler then told him that those lorries that carry liquids go straight onto the train without getting x-rayed. The driver was still asleep in the cab, so they quietly climbed up onto the tanker. The hatch on top was locked, but the smuggler cut the thick wire cables. They had no idea what was inside, but as soon as the hatch was opened, the smell hit them. It was chocolate. They were going to sneak into the UK in a heated tank of liquid chocolate. It was a freezing night outside, and when they first climbed down into the warm chocolate, it felt really good. But after about 15 minutes, the heat started to get really uncomfortable. The interviewee is quoted as saying, We know as soon as the tanker moves, we only have 20 to 30 minutes before it reaches the train, and we can get out and claim asylum. 
but the truck didn't move. They waited there for over two hours. Some more time passed when some of the older men began crying, and in the end, they all agreed to leave. The chocolate was so sticky, he said, that it took all of them to help each other out. The last guy struggled most because there was no one to push him up. He kept getting sucked back down by the chocolate. He had to kick his shoes off to get out, which got left behind. At the end of the interview, he said, We're all covered in chocolate. Hair, eyes, hands, everywhere. You can see our chocolate footprints for 300 meters. The narrator of this story eventually got into the UK on a trailer loaded with new lorry cabs. He tried the doors on all these cabs until he found one that was open and hid inside. He has been granted asylum and is now working in an Arabic restaurant in Sheffield. My question is this. When it was discovered that the tanker had been breached, do you think that managers at the chocolate factory ordered that the batch be discarded as waste? Or did they cover up the fact that the seal was broken and use the chocolate anyway? You know the answer, and it might put you off eating chocolate forever. <laughs>